Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramph, and I'm here to talk to you guys about everything that's happening in and around Missoula for the next couple days for the weekday of Missoula. Uh, today is June 7th. Let me double check that. Yes, it's June 7th, uh, and let's talk about some weather, talk about some news, what's happening in and around Missoula, and I have a guest on today. I got Kristen Sackett. She's from the uh, um, Missoula Downtown Partnership, and she's here to talk about the 32nd annual Out to Lunch and the 17th annual Downtown Tonight, and talk about all the stuff that Downtown Missoula is doing this summer to keep you uh, to keep people in Missoula and uh, keep people visiting Missoula engaged in the downtown and the Missoula community. So let's get started with a little bit of weather. So the weather is looking really nice today. Today is going to be the nicest part of the week, while the rest of the week, eh, not so much. You have, you have expected highs into 91 degrees outside, so you, need, you, may, you may need to put that sunscreen on for sure. Uh, your low is going to be in the 52, but Thursday you can expect your highs to be 86, transferring over to the weekend and Fridays with a 40 to 70 percent chance of showers with highs into the 60s, lows into the 40s, so we're going to have a little cold snap for your weekend, but I'll get more on that um, as we get to the weekend because the weather has a tendency to change um, after a day or two, and we'll see whether or not the cold spell comes through quickly or it kind of lingers for maybe a couple days or so. But, you know, we're, we're going to need the uh, extra rain maybe during the summer as well. So maybe it's a, you know, a silver lining on this dark cloud that will be coming through us. Um, so let's talk about some news things. I have a nice little uh, interesting little news tidbit for you guys as well. Uh, um, I saw this in the Missoulian, and here's something that you actually might like. Uh, the parent in incarcer incarcer incarceration of popular children's cartoon SpongeBob SquarePants in the Missoula County Detention Facility uh, can be attributed to staff training. So uh, according to Brenda Bassett, public information officer for the Missoula County Sheriff's Office, confirmed Tuesday that the mock jail listing is part of a detention officer training. So ac um, according to the jail record, SpongeBob is 34 years old and was was booked on May 24th. Um, he has no listed charges or court appearances and does not uh, have a booking photo. This is not his first time in custody with, um, with SquarePants' previous time in jail roster, also likely for training purposes. So an examination of the list of people currently in the custody of the uh, jail did not turn up any additional fictional characters. So I thought that was a pretty interesting story. Um, in, in today's news as well, um, today is the day that Greg Gianforte was supposed to appear in court Court, but he also he um, a asked for a, a file and extension order to uh, basically extend this and work out a deal and settle this outside of court with uh, Ben Jacobs, the uh, reporter from The Guardian that he uh, body slammed, which was confirmed by Fox uh, News reporters um, the day of. So, uh, so they're going to figure out what's going to go on with that. But it's also a misdemeanor assault charge that has to be done through the court. But any additional... Um, charges that will be against Gianforte would be a uh, more of a dispute that will be Ben Jacobs versus Gianforte not necessarily uh, the state of Montana if you if you think about it like that because um, the thing about like court proceedings is like oh if you assault someone you you know you go there for uh, you go to district court and be like oh okay here's a, here's the thing and for his uh, bail his bail would have been five hundred dollars for that uh, assault charge um, of course, he is required to appear in Justice Court in Bozeman before June 7th, though that uh, deadline um, apparently has been extended, and the courtroom is only in session Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, leaving just one more opportunity for Gianforte to appear unless an extension is granted, which it was. So um, in national news, President Trump says he has chosen Christopher Wray, who worked in the Justice Department during the presidential uh, President George W. Bush administration to head the FBI. Um, Trump tweeted, and in my best Trump voice, I will be nominating Chris A. Ray, a man with impeccable credentials, to be the new director of the FBI, details to follow. And that's my best one. So Ray has been in private practice for the last 12 years, working in litigation as a partner at the King and Spalding law firm in Washington and Atlanta. Before that, he spent nearly a decade in Justice Department focusing on corporate fraud in addition to trade sa sanctions, money laundering, and other areas of the law. So he has been the nominated 
Trump's nomination for uh, FBI director after he fired James Comey for in investi I don't know. It, it's very interesting because James Comey was investigating Trump and the Russian ties in terms of the election. Um, so that's a little bit of this and that. Um, in international news, if you haven't heard, over the weekend there was uh, seven people were killed in central London when three attackers drove a van into pedestrians um, on a London bridge and launched a knife attack in Borough Market on Saturday night. The attackers were shot dead by officers in what police have de uh, declared to be a terror attack. Eyewitnesses spoke of attackers targeting people in pubs and restaurants. Some people tried to fight them by throwing chairs and glasses as the area was Cor um, cornered off. Um, the police sh shouted at members of the public to run or hide. Attackers were shot dead by police within eight minutes of the first call. The deputy chairwoman of the Independent Police um, Complaints um, Commission, Sarah Green, confirmed that 46 shots have been fired by eight police officers. Three officers from City London Police and five from Metropolitan Police. A member of the public was also shot during the altercation and was taken to the hospital. Uh, the so-called Islamic State group has said it was behind the attack. The, the three attackers have been identified as Karam, Shazad, uh, um, Rashid, uh, Radu An, and Yosef uh, Zaba. So that's kind of what's happening in and around the uh, um, Missoula, Montana, the nation, and the world. So that kind of concludes everything that you need to know. I have an art clip for you guys. Um, I got dubbing stuff later in the show, and I also have a guest coming up right after this uh, art clip from the Missoula Art Museum. Hey guys, we're back here with Kristen Sackett, and she is with Missoula Downtown Partnership. I don't know why I was, I'm thinking way too much before I'm talking. <laughs> so uh, let's talk about, uh, it's the 32nd annual Out to Lunch. Yeah. So let's talk about that. Yeah, it kicks off today. It's the, the kickoff, and we're so excited. It's going to be a beautiful day. That doesn't always happen the first week in June. Um, so yeah, it kicks off at 11. It's 11 to 2 p.m. every Wednesday, all summer, June, July, and August. There's 13 weeks of it, so plenty of time to come down and hang out with us. Um, you Knew Me When is going to be on the stage. They're a couple out of the Seattle area, I believe. Mm. Really awesome. They're super fun. They played last year, um, and they really wanted to come back, and the committee said, come on yep. back. We, we want to have you. And and uh, then the kids' activities by Child Bloom Guitar. So any fans of Child Bloom oh, Guitar yeah. can come down and bring the kids, and it's a free activity for them. And I always forget um, that uh, the Out to Lunch also has additional activities because right. you have everyone who's like, oh, there's food, there's music, but there's also a kids' yeah, activity. Yeah, yeah, it's a family-friendly event. It's free for everyone to come down. We've, it's really important to us to keep our events um, from the Missoula Downtown Association free. Um, for people to come and enjoy. Obviously, you have to buy the food part, but right. if you just want to come and hang out and bring the kids down and let them run amok in Karis Park, you can absolutely do that, and we encourage it's, people to do that. And it's nice because you, um, with this free event, it entices people to come down, yeah. and then you have sponsors, which yeah. also help pay for the events yeah. and pay for the bands that are very, uh, what I like to describe as geo, 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 
uh, geographically diverse. Yeah, totally. Yeah, we have you know a nice combination of local bands and then bands that are from you know the region um, northwest. I think we've had people as far as like Colorado before. Um, so yeah, it's it's a great. We try to mix it up. Maybe have a few returners that people said, oh, I really like this. I hope you have them again. And old favorites um, that people have loved for many years, and then some new ones. So we try to get as many bands as we can. But 13 weeks goes and fills really quickly. And and like you said, our sponsors are so so huge and so important. Every week there's up to three sponsors that help us out. Um, we couldn't do without them. This week it's First Interstate Bank, Neptune Aviation, and the Missoula Downtown Foundation. They're all going to be there. So come down and. Say hi to them they would love to say hi and you know thanks to them for support and then all the others about 50 different businesses between out to lunch and downtown tonight wow. that support um those programs and keep it free for the whole community that's great and also the food vendors yeah um we were just talking a little bit before the interview mm -hmm. that you're saying that there is positions available to be like on call yeah, in case okay. some food vendors would be like oh i can't make it this particularly because yeah. i'm catering at a wedding right sure that. yeah we, we it's a new program this year so it's a pilot program we're still kind of working through it but if anybody out there um, is interested get a hold of us and we call it the guest vendor program so um, some people can't commit to a full 13 weeks every week um, some people just want to be able to fill in um, where they can and then we have our primary food vendors who sometimes get pulled uh, maybe they're going on vacation right. maybe they're doing a different event they need to be out of town and instead of having an empty spot where we could have something fun and new we decided to Put people on a waiting list and if we can fill them in you know right. based on the space and the the power available and all that fill them in and then it just gives people a new opportunity to try something new that vendor to test the crowd and see if they like it and just kind of makes it more fun for everybody and you guys are always so good about like uh um having people uh, miss a week or so. It's just like, you know, like we ask that you be there for 13 weeks, but if you have to miss it right. for one reason or another, then we're perfectly fine with that. Yeah, yeah, we try to be flexible, we understand, and that's why we developed the guest vendor program. So there wasn't that stress of, oh gosh, I'm gonna miss it, I'm so sorry. You know, then that gives everybody a, a little bit of sigh relief and, and everybody's happier that way. No. Yeah. All right, so uh, um, once again, um, like we were just talking about out to lunch, uh, yeah. downtown tonight actually yeah. started last, last Thursday. week because last week was June one on Thursday, so we said let's kick it off. Um, so uh, downtown tonight actually has fourteen weeks this year, so continuing this week, um, we're super excited. Mabel's Rage is going to be on stage there out of Helena. They're a really fun rock band. It's hmm. super fun. Um, they've been here a couple of years. Last year, we um, they went to play and we had a massive thunderstorm come through like right as downtown tonight was starting and it soaked the stage and we, they weren't able to play because we don't want them playing this right. year with wet electrical around so so that's why we invited them back this year to kind of make up for that because we had a few people that were bummed that they couldn't play so so same same setup as out to lunch you know it's for all it's 5 30 to 8 30 every thursday june july and august there's you know the free live music the food vendors the kids activity and then you know, some people like to have a nice uh, drink after right, work. Right, so we right. do have a bar, um, <laughs> beer and wine. You're very apprehensive when you're saying it. it's like the beer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, because you want you want this to be like a family friendly we event. We want everyone to be able to come. We don't want it to be about the drinking. Right. But you know, some people like to after work have just one one nice cold drink on a hot day with friends and come out for happy hour and yeah. and we encourage that. You know, not only you know for downtown tonight employees come down for happy hour like at, right after work, but out to lunch. Get out of the office, come down, come hang with us. Um, you know, we'd love to have, you know, the downtown employees come down and right. and enjoy it as well. It's a great opportunity to and, get out. And your organization, a Downtown Partnership, um, down, the Downtown Association, all you guys are mm -hmm. um, every, day, every day, I mean like two times a week, every week, out there yeah. to give more information about upcoming events and hand out those nice little yeah. handbills, like mm -hmm. those the long handbills of Yep. So many bands and so yep. many events and the kid events as well. Yeah, yeah. So if you, if you need a full schedule, um, you can either go to MissoulaDowntown.com or come stop in our office. We're at 218 East Main Street, a kind of a kitty corner across the street from the library. We have handbills. You feel free to take a stack, take it back to your office, hand them out to your friends, put it on the fridge. Um, so then you can check each week what's going on and be like, oh, I really like that kids activity. I love that band. Or, you know, that, that sponsor, I love that sponsor. I want to go thank them for making this 
be a free community event. So definitely come out and get, get those because we have plenty of them in our office for everyone. And uh, where is your offices and uh, how can people get in contact with you? Yep, 218 East Main is our office. We're on the corner of Washington and East Main, so kind of kitty corner across from the library. Or you can call our office 543-4238 or email us anytime info at missoulodowntown.com. So if you need more information, we're happy to let you know, fill you in. Um, we love having the community out and it's really important to us to have them come out and enjoy our downtown. Well, thanks for joining yeah, me this no morning. Problem. And it's the 32nd annual Out to Lunch, the 17th annual Downtown Tonight. And you and before you know it, it'll all be over. I know. Because summer is just starting. <laughs> I know. So definitely come out. It goes quick for me, so it must go quick for everybody else. So definitely get out there. There's plenty of weeks to come out and hang out with us. Right. Thank yeah, you. Thanks. The meeting was presided over by Itagaki-san and was attended by several hundred men. At this meeting, it was resolved to dissolve the organization. The members did not, of course, propose to renounce their principles, but only to disband the party insofar as it was an organization. And remember, tremendous political repression, and so they were responding largely to that, to sort of disperse but not get rid of their ideals. About the time that this meeting closed, my colleagues, Mr. Thompson and Dr. Verbeck, came to Osaka on their way to visit Tosa in compliance with Mr. Itagaki's request. Some 60 or 70 of the members of the Liberal Party who were still in Osaka came to our house at our invitation and listened to an interesting and instructive lecture from Dr. Verbeck in our parlor. A few days after, Dr. Verbeck and Mr. Thompson went on to Tosa and began Christian work there. I too want to thank Greg and the Montana High Tech Alliance for all you've done to create this ecosystem. Um, the ecosystem existed before you started, but you've really been the nurturing leader that has really brought this forward with Christina's leadership here in Missoula. I always want to thank you for putting Christina here in Missoula. I think it really was important in bridging the gap between Bozeman and Missoula. And then I think there's a lot of other communities that are benefiting from that. Um, I'd also like to say happy birthday, and I'd like all of you to join me at drinks, not right now, uh, singing happy birthday, but uh, happy birthday, 42, 43, something like that. Yeah, <laughs> so my name is Tom Sturgis. I'm Senior Vice President of Corporate Strategy for ATG. ATG is a company that's headquartered in Kansas City, Missouri, um, but our largest office is right here in Missoula, Montana, actually literally on Main Street. So we have... Um, as of this morning, our 93rd employee joined us here in Missoula, 104 total. Um, we've got some folks in Bozeman, Helena, uh, and Billings as well. Um, she has pretty high supports under her knees because her little knees are pretty tight. And if we don't put those supports under her knees, they'll fall to one side or the other, and that's going to tend to dislocate her hips and change the shape of her back. So. Um, that's why she's set up that way. But you can see that um, her situation is much, much different than Deanna. Deanna also has side supports. Um, she's got things to support all of her joints as much as possible. And as I told you, her mother says that since she began sleeping this way, she sleeps much better at night. But the reality is we're not going to be able to change her dislocated hips and her very, very profoundly distorted back. In a very practical sense, our release wheelchair, done in one hour, these two people, these two people did the wheelchair for this little girl. Here she is after an hour. She ended up being there the whole day because of her big sister. But there she is with her oldest brother taking a snooze in her chair, which was done by this OT and the OT student working with her. Two people. She looks beautiful, and it was a pretty easy That's job. When we looked at the the uh, the ground here and saw what what was capable uh, they, you're right they did neck down the traffic lanes but it didn't it didn't end up taking a lane away it just um, squeezes because the oh, car I see. I see. Okay. goes on both sides and they wanted it to be a, a visual cue for people who are drivers just to slow down and be aware of pedestrians and kind of any activities yeah. that might happen in the park and there are some, some times when we may um, put in a request to the city to close the street down and have some sort of cultural celebration extend uh, from the MAM side to the adventure cycling side and kind of uh, expand there. But um, you're right, looking at this building, it's an old Carnegie library. 
and you don't necessarily think contemporary art when you see the facade and the exterior here with the rows of brickwork and the tile and so we thought well we there's we would really like to communicate our mission and our dedication to contemporary art and living artists when you when you approach the building and you can see from the outside exactly what we stand for Hey, I just want you to remind you guys that Look Before You Speak is a MCAT-sponsored show um, that we uh, basically air new every two weeks. Um, it's hosted by Steve Glukert, former art director at the Missoula Art... No, art curator. My bad. Um, I gotta get my words right. Um, at the Missoula Art Museum. And uh, the Missoula Art Museum is actually where the old um, Missoula County um, Public Library used to be before they built the new one back in the 80s. And then they're gonna be building a whole nother library pretty soon, in which MCAT will be in by hopefully by 2020. That's the plan. And speaking of MCAT, if you are interested in finding out more about these programs and more, log on to MCAT.org. If you want to learn more about my show, Wake Up Missoula, log on to not wakeupmissoula.org. It's wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. Yes, Missoula. Um, so nice we made you spell it out twice, but of course you don't have to spell Missouga. You can actually look up Wake Up Missoula on the Google, as old people like to call it like that, and I am soon to be an old person. So um, uh, I've just decided that's how it works, is that you can be like, I'm old now. Boom. Because I, I say so. Um, there's YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. I'm on all those things, and I post uh, this video and more um, on that website, and just wonderful things um, to connect what it is to be Missoula and to wake up Missoula and that's just basically me just doing a tagline um, I just showed you guys Megs now I'm on some City Council stuff so let's talk some City Council so um, Jeff Stevens um, he he's he's involved with a lot of the comedians a lot of the stuff um, in and around Missoula and he was talking in terms of a um, committee's report um, he did uh, a little talk kind of like overview of the community forum report he gives an interesting take on going to the movies particularly the one that will be built at the new uh, Southgate Mall which is gonna be a nineplex AMC theater Movie buff. Uh, I was most interested in the uh, in the uh, luxury AMC uh, Nineplex that's uh, being constructed uh, there right now. It's quite a massive building. I'm sure you've noticed it. But uh, of course, I'm, I'm looking forward to being going, able to go there and, and watch a 3D movie and have dinner and drinks and recline in my leather luxury power recliner. And if the movie is not particularly good, you can just go to sleep. Uh, which is not a bad idea, really. You know, of course, it occurred to me you can do exactly the same thing at home, or pretty much the same thing at home, uh, for a lot less money. But the, the problem is that about midway through the movie, your wife's going to come along and call you a lazy slob and order you to go out and mow the lawn. So I do see the advantages of going to the mall instead. All but right, so that was uh, Jeff Stevens. I, I just wanted to kind of liven, liven things up uh, for the uh, some of the reports as well as I go into a request for a daycare uh, structure re uh, basically expansion and structuring that kind of thing so this is a request from Stuart Armstrong of Camp Fire Western Montana for a daycare center um, at 2200 South 10th Street West um, this is uh, pretty much maybe about like seven blocks or so from the good food store if you do like a kitty corner kind of like a little slash through um, the applicant has submitted the conditional use request uh, in order to operate a daycare center. This is out of a building which is uh, used to be a former religious assembly use. Um, so it's an area zone for residential use. Um, so what they're gonna do with this is gonna be some daycare as well. Um, Rick Sampson um, from the old church um, is happy that this is gonna be converted into a daycare. So this is what he had to say. He's one of the former er owners of the church area of the building that was used for religious uses. I say that when we decided that we were going to put the property up for sale, one of our concerns was that it would be someone that would uh, benefit the community. And I really want to encourage the council tonight to approve the, uh, the request because we feel like this will benefit the community. And uh, that's really about all I have to say on the matter. They, uh, I've had a chance to chat with these people, and I think that they're upstanding folks, and I think they'll be a benefit. 
All right, so that was... I keep on forgetting people's names just like that. But that was uh, Rick Sampson. He, he, he's one of the two original owners of the old church that were selling it to this daycare center. Uh, the, owner, the original owners praised the sale of the um, Camp Fire Western Montana Daycare. John Wilkins is concerned about uh, parking. And um, once you mention parking, you really can't n not stop talking about parking, which is kind of what this meeting ended up kind of being about is like the parking, the how kids are going to get dropped off and all that stuff. And this is John Wilkins, who is, oh, where did I put it? Okay, here's John Wilkins, who is concerned about the parking and how the uh, drop off will be. I'm not that concerned about the parking more than I am the drop off. And I say this because I live right in front of a, a daycare that's right across the street. And I see parents come and the car will be facing the right way, one will be facing the wrong way, they'll all be falling out. I've seen cars get wrecked on the corner. Uh, do you have a, a safety feature to keep everybody in the direction? and? <laughs> <laughs> no, Let right? Let me know if you know, find one. Uh, yeah, in that, 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 might be a, that might be a question for Public Works. Okay, how well, this is gonna Public Works or to. whoever. But I, I really have a concern about that because I see that every day in front of my house. And it, this is one of the best daycares in Missoula, but parents are parents. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. They're in a hurry. Mm -hmm. And so that, that safety concerns me quite a much. I guess the parking thing, you probably, parents don't really use that much parking until you have a Christmas or some kind of a function or, or something at all. And then there's never enough parking. So. All right. So that was John Wilkins talking about some of his woes when it comes to the daycare across his street. And hopefully that this daycare that's being built isn't um, – it's basically going to not have a lot of the same issues when it comes to a lot of uh, cars coming there um, dropping kids off and whatnot. Um, let's see. Short-term parking is something that parents need. But most care daycares don't really require. Um, most of the parking, the permanent parking that a lot of daycares have are usually about um, three to four with one additional parking spot for people who are ADA accessible. Um, but a couple of the concerns for, of safety for some of the kids since the facility is near a water ditch. So, um, you know, there's a, there's a bunch of little ditches, especially in that uh, particular area of the Missoula uh, of, well, I don't know why I say the Missoula because I was going to say something else, but it's in Missoula. Uh, Doug Harvey um, with Developmental Services, he uh, talks on details um, on what Public Works can do to improve the safety. In the sidewalk situation, what we like to do on these bridges is, and we've done this a number of times on the, and that's why this is drawn this way, is put the sidewalk on the bridge. However, there's a sidewalk on the other side of the bridge and this is just too narrow. And 10th, although it's a residential, it could be a local collector eventually too, as it's as it was mentioned, it's one of the through streets all the way from Russell to uh, to Eaton Street. So it would make a likely connection uh, via Eaton to Spurgeon. Uh, so this is pretty much what we would build if it was anything else. Uh, again, line up this. We like to line them up across driveways. We don't like to do transitions to driveways. This could be uh, a double car garage our driveway parking with a 20-foot setback for parking you know for a garage so really this is set up for just about any use it's all right so he basically says is that um they're able to uh adapt and evolve depending upon what needs to be done if they say oh we need this it's like oh yes we have the space to build that so that's kind of like what he was talking about. So the city decided to extend the meeting to clear up some of the language and to come up with a solution that best fits the safety of children through a six-foot fence around the ditch area to prevent any kids from going into the ditch. And John Wilkins also commented um, saying that, you know, sometimes there's a little space right there that kids can get caught under or they can basically crawl under if they're um, they're curious. So um, here's Mary McCray, and she's with Demo Demo Development Services, and this is um, she has to say about uh, the, some of the that issue. I think likely the best solution for safety of the children will involve a variety of things. Supervision being one of them, fencing, helping out, and um, just general concern about perhaps. Uh, the city dictating a, singu a single solution to safety and if that fails in the future. 
<laughs> All right, so that was Melissa McRae, and she was talking about that. So, I mean, basically repeating what I just said. Um, Michelle Cares, um, she's not necessarily for this, but, um, she, I mean, she's for the daycare, but just how about the way that uh, the stage is going forward is she's not too uh, um, for it. So this is what she had to say. Your time... Mr. Meyer, who's here today, but other people who have talked to us, um, has been well spent. I hope that you agree um, because the project is better because of it. Um, so I'll be voting yes. Oh, sorry. I must have uh, got, got a misquote. My bad. Just ignore that. Just completely forget I just did that. Here's John Dabari, and he kind of um, sums and wraps things up for this meeting. This is the last quote I have before I end city council. The thoughtfulness of Mr. Harvey and the applicant in trying to come up with a solution for the parking. As I said, I don't know if this is perfect, but I think it's as good as we're going to get while maintaining sidewalk connectivity and some opportunity for drop off and the ADA spot while also not cutting into the play area in a way that would diminish that utility. Um, I think uh, we had a, a it, it was 20 minutes well spent to talk about the fencing and take a recess and, and come up with some language because I think we addressed Mr. Wilkins' concern about safety with regard to the ditch. And my hope is that uh, staff and the applicant, again, can work this out in, in a creative way so that it meets everybody's uh, needs. We've addressed the number of participants issue and the square footage because um, the fire marshal will have a say in this. and. And we've also addressed parks as the applicant has said that he would be happy to meet with uh, parks and rec staff on this issue. So I will be supporting the motion. All right. So the motion did pass and the daycare uh, will be moving forward on any of these plans. And any issues that will come up will be dealt with through developmental, ser developmental services and public works in which they will come up with an additional solution to uh, help with the uh, um, incarnation of a new daycare um, which will be called, let me just double check, once again, the um, daycare is the Stuart Armstrong of Camp Fire, Western Montana um, Daycare Center. So that's kind of what's going on here. The city engineers would have a uh, say on this fence compliances. The meeting uh, went on to talk on this for uh, quite some time and eventually a condition to require a six foot high fence around the play area where the city, uh, by the city ordinance, subject to review and approval by developmental service staff, blah, 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 et cetera. Et cetera. <laughs> the motion passed and um, um, from there and the main motion did pass on the conditional use for the daycare center was approved. Um, and you can watch the entire meeting by logging on to ci.missoula.mt.us under the City of Missoula Agenda Webcast Minutes link. Um, here's the nice little website. It's a beautiful website. I just love going to this website every single time. And it's so easy to find everything that you need to do. You go to your government. You go to Agenda's Webcast Minutes. You can also go to How Do I. You can apply for a job, apply for a license, a permit, do all these things uh, um, in the city that the city requires you to do while you're in the city limits. Because if you want to cut something down, put something in, you have to get a permit from the city, so it's a great resource for anybody to use the city of Missoula. But I have a brand new uh, dub and stuff, and it's from the movie God's Little Acre, and when I come back, um, we're going to talk about some events that are happening in and around Missoula, and not only the one that's happening at the Karis Park. <laughs> I can't wait to pull this prank. <laughs> hey, hey you, hey, hey, guess what I'm going to do right about now? I'm going to totally prank that kid. Well, grit, son. I can't wait for you to prank that kid. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be so much funny. <laughs> now be quiet now. Hey. All right, let's do this thing. Hey, kid. I'm gonna touch your golden locks. Ooh, these are sad. <laughs> Mama, have you come back, Mama? <laughs> Wait, what's going on? Huh? I I thought I was at Coachella. Now you listen here, son. I have a job for you to do. That looks weird. Oh, yeah, no, calm stop. Down, uh, uh, oh, you're just untying my hands. 
All right, there you go. Now, I hope you're not a danger to yourself and others. I'm going to tell my non-existent mama what you did to me. Now, you listen to me, boy. Non-existent or real. I can't have you blabbing on what, what happened here. What did happen here? What? Now, you listen here, boy. If you're going to come around whoa, here... Whoa, whoa, slow down, down there, son. Oh, whoa, uh, he didn't do... He's no, not, come stop. on, relax. Hold me back. Yo, you need to relax. So, son, he, we need your help. The government is spying on us, and we need your help to spy on them back so we can know exactly what's going on. The government is after us. Do you understand? Well, uh, I want no part of this. This is weird. We'll jump cut to where you're part of this. Huh. Isn't this just a defining rod? No. Whoa. whoa. I think I feel something. <laughs> whoa. Oh, 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 what's going on? Oh, 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 whoa. You must have the gift. Oh, All right. Ease up on the action. Whoa. I knew you had it in you. You. What? Wait a minute. Satellites. Hmm, not one of my best work. But let's talk about some events that are happening in and around Missoula. Let's kick things off with Aaron's Exiled um, chickens, uh, <laughs> chickens? No. Exile Children's Exhibit. This is going to be happening all of June in the Missoula, uh, Missoula County Public Library, um, otherwise known as the Missoula Public Library. Um, on display throughout the month of June, Missoula Public Library, Aaron's Exile Children, the Irish of America and the Making of a Modern Ireland is an ex exhibit that features a series of narrative panels. The display will be on location upstairs between the accounts desk and the re reference desk. It, will, it was created in honor honor of the Central of Ireland's Easter Rising in 1916 and documents the Irish struggle for independence and the role uh, the Irish in America played in keeping their uh, traditions alive. The University of Montana, the Butte Silver Bow Ar um, Archives, and the Ancient Order of, um, let's see, Hiber uh, Hibernians um, and the Friends of Irish Study in the w in the West. That's their name. And the um, gathering um, created the exhibit. Viewing is free and open to the public during the month of June during the normal public hours at the Missoula Public Library. You guys can check it out. Um, I saw a little bit of it online, but it, I'm definitely going to go check it out as soon as I get out of work today. Um, so I farm health screening at the Missoula Senior Center um, starting at this morning at 8.30 a.m., uh, there's a health screening, bone density, it, um, it's cholesterol, uh, medical, medication review, blood pressure, and hepatitis C screenings as well. So you, if you guys are interested in getting screened for hepatitis C or you just want to get blood pressure, see your cholesterol levels, you can go to the Missoula Senior Center and they'll do this for you. So a nice little screening to know what's going on with your body. Um, sometimes you, um, it's better than... Um, I set an appointment with your, with your doctor. This is more for like a lot of people who are just curious. Um, so you knew me when uh, out, at out to lunch. Sorry. So this is very, the wording, the name of the band is very interesting because it's called You Knew Me When, and it's a band that's going to be an out to lunch. It's, uh, there's going to be children's activity by Child Bloom Guitar, um, uh, f basically from what, um, Kristen told us on our interview earlier in the show. So uh, it's a weekly concert series at Karis Park at the Clark Fork River featuring musicians and over 20 variety of food vendors. And you can enjoy Montana's longest running festival every Wednesday in June, July, and August starting from 11 a.m. and going until 2 p.m. So we talked about that a lot in length in the interview. You can watch it pretty much any time um, by going on to my YouTube and my Facebook, and you can find that there. So Missoula School, uh, Middle School Writers, so if um, kids are interested in continuing on improving their writing skills over the summer, Missoula Public Library is a great place to do it. Every uh, Wednesday at 3.30 p.m. Uh, for kids who are grade age um, in grade 6 to 9, and they can improve their writing skills. So um, in other other things that are happening at 5 p.m. Um, tonight, um, Wound Healing and Hyperbaric Therapy Center Open House. So CMC... Uh, World Healing and Hyper, uh, Hyperbaric Center. Um, a community Medical Center is pleased to offer a new advanced wound care center with uh, regions of uh, ho oxygen therapy. The new therapy is used to heal wounds using the body's natural healing process. Please join them for a tour and barbecue. Um, there's 
Henry's fun Demental Hoops Basketball Camp. There's going to be a basketball camp at Hellgate High School starting at 5.30 p.m. tonight. Um, it's going to go on from June 7th to June 9th, and it's 5.30 to 8 p.m. This camp is for all girls entering grades 9 to 12. Um, Henry's Fundamental Hoops Camp will provide all-around skills, training, and well-rounded player. And for registration, go to uh, Henny Shoops. Oh, wait. So Henny's hoops.com uh, that's uh h e n n y s and then hoops.com and you can email them basically at gmail.com um roller skate fun and fitness um so if you are jonesing for some roller skating around the skate club missoula is doing a limited time roller skating inside the fairgrounds this is going to be six weeks only six weeks only that's and it does go by pretty fast if you don't be, if you're not careful from 6 to 10 p.m all ages family fun skates are provided by skate club missoula tons of space to learn to skate and hone your skills at 750 admission price includes um, skate rentals are extra two dollars you can contact them pretty much any time during these uh, special events during the june july midweek skate so it happens on six, the june 6th 7th 13th 14th to, oh wow this is a whole bunch of random days if you want to find out more information go to look up skate club missoula so that's pretty much it for your uh, uh highlighted events for your wednesday Country Dance Lesson with Kathy Clark is happening tonight, and you have your three karaoke's, um, the the trinity of karaoke's for your Wednesday night, which is going to be the Eagles Lodge, Badlander, and Sunrise Saloon. Uh, downtown is all about the Badlander and karaoke, but um, Eagles Lodge is um, basically uh, right next to Rosars, and Country ca um, um, and then um, Sunrise Saloon is. Uh, I want to say. I it's like up Russell Street. It's quite a it's quite a trek if you're not in the downtown Missoula area. So most of these events are happening in and around in the downtown area. Um, but that's basically what's happening for your Wednesday. It's all about that uh, karaoke and maybe trivia nights at a couple of your local pubs. Um, Thursday morning, we're starting at the Doubletree Hotel. It's cubicle war, managing and um, me mediating conflict at work. So if you had a stressful work environment, figure out ways to build team building and figure out ways to communicate with your coworker at the place that you work, rather than just kind of like internalize and be like, oh, this guy's a jerk, and just kind of like figure out how to, uh, how to con connect with people, how to um, communicate with other people that are either your next door neighbors in your cubicle or whatever. So this is a nice little workshop they're going to be doing um, tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Um, this is a, uh, this is great, uh, offers a skill building exercise and, and specific processes to aid in conflict resolution, both employees who find themselves in, in conflict and for managers who are expected to mediate and uh, uh, quell hostilities. Ooh, uh, Little Bugs Early Education, Missoula Insectarium at 11 a.m. tomorrow. This is for kids um, five years or younger and their parents to enjoy programs to explore tailored just for the youngest visitors. Each week there will be a new theme, an exciting bug ambassador, so you can hold them and touch them and experience a new bug and be like, oh, this is a pretty cool bug. Ah, oh, it has so many legs. And it's like, it's, it's this part of nature. I was like, oh, okay, I get it now. Oh, cool. That's kind of how it works. Um, meditation for veterans. Learning Center at Red Willow does a lot of great things for veterans. This is one of them. Starting at 1 in the afternoon, meditation for veterans. And this is a very short 1 to 445, 1 to 145. It's an ongoing class and it's free for veterans. And this is great just to kind of like meditate. Is for vet is guided to mindfulness practices, exploring the method of paying attention to the breath to increase and calm and reduce stress. And of course, no previous um, experience necessary, um, which I don't, which doesn't make sense if you think about it. Um, creative crab art at the Missoula Insectarium at 3 p.m. They're doing a whole bunch of stuff at the Missoula Insectarium, and otherwise known as the Missoula Butterfly House. Um, they will be getting a very um, creative during the ac this activity and create their own very colorful hermit crab, and you can bring home. They will discuss the hermit crab lifestyle and how they can find a new shell to live in when they grow larger, and you can stop at any time between 3 and 5 p.m. to make your own. Uh, Mabel's rage. Uh, at downtown tonight. Downtown tonight is happening every single Thursday from 5.30 to 8.30. If you haven't already heard it from the interview, um, um, it's going to be music by Mabel's Rage. Um, children's activity is by the YMCA. Um, sponsored by Neptune Aviation, Republic Services of Montana. Um, downtown tonight happens every Thursday. We already told I told you that this is a, an outdoor venue for live music, um, best food vendors. There's a Bud Light and beer garden and wine garden for residents and visitors. This event highlights the weekly family activities and always is free just to 
attend. But of course, you know, you, there's no free food, so you have to pay for your food. So that's the only thing that's uh, I don't want to talk about it anymore. Okay, so a uh, digital entrepreneur meetup Missoula at Rodium, the public house is having a uh, digital entrepreneur meetup, but keep your pitches at home, people. They don't want, they have a no pitch policy. You can't just be there as like, hey, you should check out my website. No, 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 no. It's about how to make a website and all the technical stuff in terms of doing um, a digital entrepreneurship. It's just like, okay, how do I start a business digitally? It's like, oh, here's how you can do this. So you can RSVP uh, at Eventbrite. Um, you can look it up and you can go to the MissoulaEvents.net link to look up, find out more information about this particular one and to improve your digital entrepreneurship skills. Big Sky Film Series presents Rumble. So a Big Sky um, Documentary Film Festival that happens every single year. They are doing a film series at the Missoula, Missoula Children's Theater. And this is a, uh, a film that can be showing called Rumble and it starts at 8 p.m tomorrow night is a story of a profound essential and until now missing chapter in the history of american music the indigenous influence and featuring music icons charlie Patton, milford bailey link ray jimmy hendrix jesse ed davis i don't i think jimmy hendrix is not necessarily like that unknown so um there's a whole bunch of stuff about rumble will show how these talented native musicians help shape the soundtrack of our lives and this is going to be at 8 p.m at the Mozilla children's theater and you can check it out. It's going to be a documentary, and you can learn about some of the really cool music and how um, indigenous folks um, influenced um, popular music today. So that's basically um, your events that are happening. Um, there are some of your Thursday events that are happening. They have jazz at Plonk. You have Passfire, which is reggae rock music at the Top Hat Lounge. Honeycombs can be at Monks, which is a DJ. Karaoke at Dark Horse. Um, yeah. That's pretty much it for all the events that are happening for your Wednesday and Thursday. I'll have your Friday events um, f for Friday and um, your weekend events. Uh, this is my basic last week of airing my show live at 8 a.m. I'll be doing my show at 9 a.m. after next week. Um, next week, I'll be taking the week off. I'm going to be on vacation. My cousin's going to be graduating from high school, and it's going to be wonderful, and I can't wait to uh, see him again. Uh, I see him once a year every summer, um, but this is a nice way to see him um, kind of like go off into adulthood. It's so interesting how this time flies and goes by, but you can always um, go back and watch a lot of my episodes and more. Um, even with the old school uh, Noel uh, Josh Mini episodes from the early 2014s, we started Wake Up Missoula in 2014, and um, I've been showing more recent episodes with just me, because me, 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 and um, I haven't really been looking for a co-host. <laughs> I know I should, but um, it's nice to uh, bounce things off of somebody besides a camera that's just like staring at you. But find out more information by wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. You can find out more information by going on to mcat.org. And, you know, before you guys head out for your Wednesday, which is supposed to be a very nice day, just take a nice deep breath because it's going to be a nice clear day. <sighs> Oh, that feels much better. I should <laughs> take deeper breaths more often. <laughs> so for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. I'll see you guys Friday, and then I'll be off for another week. So for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Thanks for joining me. Mm -hmm.